Yana Gorskaya is the co-executive producer, director, and editor for What We Do in the Shadows. I'm Matt Noble of Gold Derby. And Yana, I wanted to start off by asking you, uh, what's been the scariest thing about working on this show? Oh, my God. Um, I think for me, coming in as an editor and feeling as if I knew this cast before they knew me uh, was probably the scariest thing. Because for me, they were all old friends and they should know me. And I approached them and they were like, who is this overenthusiastic woman <laughs> coming at me? Uh, but they warmed up pretty quick. So, But that was definitely the, the frightening moment for me <laughs> on what yeah, we're yeah. the shadows <laughs> yeah you, you sort of as you said sort of came on as an editor you directed uh some episodes for season two and i believe for season three you directed more than half of the episodes right i directed like, six yeah. yeah so that 10 is six out of 10 that's I've, I've done my maths correctly um so like you know you've been on a journey uh, throughout the course of these three seasons as well. Uh, do you want to talk us through that, how you've gone from sort of editor to director to the sort of primary director? Um, yeah, you know, I started on the movie, on the feature version with Taika and Jemaine, um, and we cut a lot of that here in this very room. And um, they asked me to come on board for the pilot, and I had so much fun on the movie with them. I said yes, um, and they were always supportive of me directing, um, and it was something I had resisted for a long time because I wanted to have a family, <laughs> um, and so I said no to a lot of opportunities, um, but they and Paul Sands were really supportive of me and coming on in season two and giving it a go, uh, and that went extraordinarily well. Um, I, you know, as I was doing it, I had quite amount, of, uh, quite a lot of fear <laughs> when I first came in. Um, and then when I got back in editorial and saw how good my dailies were, I was like, oh, I can do this. Like, this, this actually is a talent that I have. And this went really well. And um, the cast really enjoyed having me on set. And um, my episodes came out well. And so they asked me back to helm half of season three. Um, and which went great too. I, you know, and it got a whole lot less scary very quickly. Um, in part because I found it really reassuring that my my dailies were good. <laughs> yeah. Does does Yana the director ever create problems for Yana the editor? Oof, you know, I'm proud of the fact that I create less problems. <laughs> <laughs> I think because I do have an editor brain, mm. I, I'm cutting it in my head as I go. So I usually have a way out. Um, so yes, I kick myself on occasion. I do, I am hard on myself. And I'm much easier on other directors now that I'm directing. <laughs> so. and congratulations too, because uh, for the last season of the show, you got an Emmy nomination for editing uh, the Resurrections episode. What was that experience like uh, of not just being nominated for an Emmy, but also being a part of what we do in the shadows that really had a breakout year at the Emmys? Like, I don't think your first season got any nominations and your second one got 10. Like, that's a big, like, sort of like, um, sort of coming onto the scene in a big way in those industry awards. Uh, it was really wonderful on so many levels. I think because we all felt like we were making this kind of idiosyncratic show that we didn't necessarily know that anybody else appreciated <laughs> or got. And so seeing that, um, you know, the Emmy folks thought that we were funny and smart in the same way that we thought we were funny and smart was really very validating. And also I got to be nominated with Dave McMaster, who... I've edited with for over a decade now and um, is a dear, dear friend. And I wouldn't wanna be nominated with anybody else. If um, uh, So that was really cool. What was uncool was getting nominated in the pandemic year and um, not being able to attend or really 
truly celebrate. Um, you know, that was, that felt like a downer, but you know, still you got to be nominated at the Emmy. So that was good. <laughs> yeah. Um, you said it was nice to hear the Academy uh, sort of, sort of thought you guys are funny and smart too. What do you think works about this show? What is the, th- what is the sort of special ingredient? What's the thing that makes this show what it is? Well, I, there's so many things about it, but I, I, I actually think it's, it's um, being incredibly stupid in a smart way <laughs> is probably our magic. And the fact that we kind of get to do straight comedy and we're not, um, and because our characters are hundreds of years old, we're, we're not constrained by um, current norms. Like we, we can be shocking and transgressive and um, that's because they're 700 year old idiots. Like <laughs> that, that, that is very freeing in our, in our comedy space that we get to play in. Um, yeah, I think that's what makes it special. That and Mm -hmm. our commitment to our documentary style of filmmaking. I Mm -hmm. love that um, we really do throw away some of our biggest stunts and gags that that some of them just play completely background like we could barely catch them because it happened so fast. How could a documentary crew keep up? So um, I love that. (laughs) Yeah, and maybe more than some of the other uh, mockumentary shows, uh, you sort of address the camera people a bit more as action's happening and oh, have that a bit more part yeah. of the show yeah but what happens on our show you have to right mm. <laughs> yeah yeah someone just straight up got murdered like you have to talk. Yeah. <laughs> you've got like as you say the characters are hundreds of years old so you can have fun playing around with that but something i find really interesting is the sort of coming together of the two sort of I don't know, times and worlds and sort of things. So you've got like an episode, I believe you directed where there's this sort of mythic ancient, like siren sort of thing that's enticing the guys this uh, in, but the way to sort of overcome them is from noise cancelling headphones from Best Buy. <laughs> With the help of Guillermo, who has yeah. a video about how modern things work. <laughs> yeah. So what's it like getting to draw on these different sort of worlds from like mythical creatures to sort of modern technology? Yeah, that's actually always been my favorite part of the show is is someone from a very antiquated time trying to deal or master um, something contemporary or in a very mundane contemporary environment trying to check out their groceries is incredibly stupid and very funny to me um and never gets old like <laughs> I, could, I could do an entire episode set in the supermarket and and I'd be yeah. so happy yeah <laughs> do you have a, the funny what do you think the funniest thing in season three was for you the funniest yeah Oof, that's hard oh probably Baron riding around in that little car (laughs) which we actually like built around Doug um we got a hoverboard and a little little baby car that we like custom fit around him so he could actually drive it around and then just removed his feet um and so just watching him do that live in the space and how much fun he was having (laughs) was probably the hardest I laughed all season yeah (laughs) This season, in a lot of ways, like I feel like it was a bit of a crossroad season for the show. A lot of the characters think about what they want to be doing, um, you know, moving forward. And um, what was that like to come in at a time, like, you know, not to come into the show, but like to sort of tell these stories where a lot of the characters were sort of considering going in different directions and weren't all sort of on the same page doing the same thing. I actually, I really loved exploring um, particularly Nandor's search for a partner and for meaning. I I thought that was surprisingly deep um, and and handled in our kind of idiotic shadows way. But that, (laughs) that, that, you know, you did have this ancient creature who is in a house with people that are partnered 
uh, and as alone and um, and how that can wear on an old soul um, and to treat it with actual gravitas and and stupidity like <laughs> um, was was really interesting for me and then always I think the the pull for for Guillermo of what am I doing here am I getting anything out of this other than abuse um, and his coming into his own and then towards the end of the season with the um, with, with Nadja and Laszlo each having their own goals and, and it just felt like we left them at a really interesting place about you know where they were in their relationship dynamics and I found that the more we played those things as drama um, the dumber and funnier they were the higher we made the stakes the um, the bigger the laughs so um, yeah I really enjoyed that for sure. Yeah. Can you think of a particular like moment from the season um, where sort of uh, stupidity and smartness sort of collided? The entire show. Yeah, the entire show. <laughs> what the show is. <laughs> That's, I mean, when I'm in editorial, I'm like, how can we make this dumber? Like, it's <laughs> often it's often the question, and I don't, and we don't mean that like on the wrong side of broad. Like, I think that um, we like small takes mm. on things, but you know, it is nice when it's properly stupid. Um, when it's stupid, me. Dumb. I mean, Colin's death, I think, is a classic example of um, you know he goes farting, um, and then um, sorry, spoiler, but. Uh, <laughs> And for me, like the entire wellness center episode was, um, you know, here we were deep in Nandor's search for acceptance and himself. And he's in these short shorts and we're doing, you know, aerobic routines <laughs> to one week it was so mwah, stupid, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's hard to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, it's also something that's so sort of um, silly and stupid, uh, silly, stupid, but also like smart is these uh, vampires who take trivial things from today so seriously. Yes. So, yeah, everything yeah. is very serious. I commit to something. 100% to yeah. an 80s workout routine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, what what is what is the most like I guess it's the smart and stupid things the most important uh thing to get right in the show from from Toy that's this is I get uh what is like sort of bringing all these different elements together what's the thing that you're trying to do as a director and editor to make it work um, you know I'm the scripts are so strong. I'm mostly trying not to fuck it up. Like, sorry, am I allowed to swear? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, I am, I always am thinking about how do we elevate something or make it even crazier. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll have these wonderful scripts and these wonderful ideas and then we'll get in the space and new ideas will come up and, and ways to to top um, what's on the page or, or work with on the page and take it in possibly another direction and to try different versions of things so that we do have a palette coming in to editorial mm -hmm. to to shape things and that we don't just go for one way of of making a scene work we have five really great ways <laughs> And it'll be a matter of then shaping the episode. So, um, yeah, that's my job is to take what's given it to me and and translate it and hopefully improve where I can. Yeah. You've done work on other Taika Waititi sort of projects, uh, you know, um, um, the Hunt for the World of People, um, I believe the editorial department for Thought Ragnarok as well. And uh, like, is that helpful to come in uh, sort of in understanding the tone and, and vision and direction and, and sort of the show? Or is it like hard to find things new or like create 
sort of a, something that stands apart from those other sort of projects that might have similar sort of influences and um I mean I think I, you know I started working with Taika on his very first movie and I and we were put together because we had a similar sensibility hmm. um, and I had come off of something with tonally very much in his world um and I think we have worked as long together as we have because we find the same things funny and we actually have a very very similar sense of tone and style um so no it's extremely helpful um yep. and it's very much my voice and sensibility too I think he had like a Russian Jewish mother and <laughs> had like a similar sense of dark deadpan humor and um i think it shows in our work <laughs> yeah. yeah very much so um can you think of a moment from the the third season that was just like particularly memorable the filming experience of it hmm. yeah i mean being in a canadian tire all night long when we were shooting the sire episode um was wacky and having Doug coming around the corner in that little tiny car um the casino like taking over a full actual casino that was closed in the pandemic with our crew and and, and the scale of that was amazing um and then this day of running around and doing the montage of um in the wellness center of all of the activities <laughs> that they do <laughs> uh was madness yeah in the best way yeah hmm. <laughs> is there a vampire on the show that you relate to or connect with the most um I think I I, I do the temp voices for Nadia and um <laughs> So, I, I mean, I'm nowhere near as good as Natasha is as, at it, but I do think some of her kind of warmth alternated with, oh, forget fucking stop, <laughs> like, yeah. is, is a little bit me. Yeah. yeah. But I can't say that I'm full vampire, any of them. I'm nicer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. None of them were based off you, right? None no. of them were like, yeah. <laughs> No, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, do you have um, how how like and and as I think someone who like is involved in sort of production, it, it might be just, how do those two sort of worlds support each other in putting together the show? Matt, you you actually hello cut out, cut out for a a, a word, word or two on that. Sorry. Okay. I was going to say, how do the worlds of production and post-production support oh, each other in the show? Very much uh, in this show. And um, we're given so much um, freedom to roam in post in terms of shaping the episodes when we go and look for archival materials to support the story. Like that's actually one of my, the art nerd in me loves <laughs> just finding old paintings and um you know, we've all got like little degrees in art history now, just, just yeah. working on this show. Um, and I'm constantly reaching out to my friends in post to say, hey, can we get a reference for this? Or um, that, like, you know, how can we think about this in terms of montage and instead of just a straight scene is a lot of what I bring to a notes session after, um, you know, we've had our first read throughs is like, yeah, things like that. Hmm. They're very uh, married <laughs> on this yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're a good person to talk about it because you are in both sort of teams. Yeah. I do, yes. <laughs> yeah. I could go um, on, but I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just to finish off, um, what for you is sort of the most special thing about working on this show? Hmm. Well, the most special thing about this show? Like, if you want to broaden it a bit. Uh, the most special thing for me on working in the show is that I get to work on something that I love, that mm -hmm. I am genuinely proud of and happy to put into the world. And I think it doesn't make the world a worse place to be in. Um, 
that is incredibly special. And I also get to do it with a lot of people that I deeply care about. Um, so I can really ask for a better place to be, honestly. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you love it? What do you love about the show? What, like what? Yeah. I love that it genuinely makes me laugh. I feel like there are a lot of comedies that I enjoy, but don't actually get a real laughs out of me. Yeah. The show, even after I've, oh, this sounds so conceited but like <laughs> I, I can watch it a hundred times and I'm still laughing at the gags which is mm. such a rare rare gift and yeah. um yeah I'm incredibly proud and happy to be yeah. working on it yeah yeah oh well, you, you don't want the right it's a bit less conceited than maybe if it was really right, so. They're amazing. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> Yana, thanks so much for talking to us today. Hey, all the best of luck for the Emmys. Uh, on your trajectory, you'll get 20 this nominations this season, right? Like zero, 10, yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah. Those right. Emmys, <laughs> they don't always work like that, but we'll find out. Um, and uh, people watching this interview can go to goldderby.com to watch other interviews and make their award predictions. Thanks, Yana. That was fun. Thank you. 